everybody, it's Mark Bowie, Bowland Outdoors. Impromptu lesson today. What's the minimal tackle box you need if you want to go fishing and still catch fish in the Fox River in Illinois? Today I'm going to show you all you need are these four things. And you can keep them in your pocket and if you forget your whole tackle box, you're still going to catch fish. You need regular hooks, you need white wiggly worms, you need some kind of line cutter because my teeth are dull after all these years, so you need a set of nail clippers and you need to carry at least some kind of line in case you break your leader and you got to add to it because if you don't have line, you're not going to be able to make it up with a fly line. All you've got are your, is your fly line and the monofilament leader on the end, so if the leader's gone, you won't be able to cast. So you've got to carry some. Let's go out in the Fox River and see if this is all we need to catch fish. So you're probably wondering, you know, how did I, why am I doing this video? I got on my scooter and said in my Jeep, grabbed my rod thinking I had my, just like usual, my fishing bag is in the seat of my little scooter, my Vino 125, my little mini tackle box. And then I got one mile away from the river, seven miles away from home and realized, no, my, my fishing bag's in my daughter's SUV from being on a paddle board yesterday. So I can either chase her down or I can go and invent a little mini fishing set. So that's what we're trying to do today. Okay, here are four things. This one gets torn out, grab the plastic, throw it in the garbage, you're done. You're just gonna have to carry it in your pocket and that's as good as it gets. Try to get a small spool, don't go crazy. Then the other three things are all gonna go inside this one. Why did I pick this one? One, the size is small enough that I can cast it on my fly rod, my 12 foot fly rod. Two, it's got a Ziploc seal. So this can go on a string around my neck, but these go inside there. The result, tiny little bitty envelope goes inside, it's waterproof, goes in your pocket. Let's go give it a try in the water. There we are, world's smallest tackle box for the Fox River. We've got our bait, we've got our hooks, we've got a, a set of nail clippers, and we've got some 10 pound fly line. If I pull out 18 feet, fold six back on itself, twist it, I end up with 10 pound, 10 pound, 20 pound test for six feet and regular 10 pound test for the remaining six feet, I end up with a two stage tapered leader. It works just fine out on the water, you're about to see it. Let's go to the Fox. Okay, so here we are in Geneva, Illinois on the Fox River. Those riffles all along there, we over on the west bank in the shade is where I'm gonna be for the next three hours. And this, this is all that I'm fishing. A little number, gosh, number one hook. Doesn't care if it's straight or bent. And a little Mr. Wiggly. And that is it. You don't even need to feed the hook up, the, the Mr. Wiggly body up onto the hook. It's a complete waste of time. All you're gonna end up with is a little hook that always wants to slide off because of the, the centrifugal force of the cast. It's always gonna wanna slide down, slide down, slide down, slide down. So if you just, give up and hang it like this. The bass are gonna eat it all the time, they don't care. You're gonna catch bass like you won't believe and you'll never have to worry about adjusting after you cast. There, there's the rest of my rod. 12 foot, five, six weight spay rod, uh, spay rod switch rod from Angler's Roost. John died with a fluger reel on the end. And uh, I think it's 250 or 300 grain switch line. Here's my Fluger Try-On reel. And you're gonna see me just casting. Maybe when my uh, fishing buddy David gets here, you're gonna see me doing, he'll, he'll catch me casting full two-handed. Let's go see if we can catch some fish. So far so good. Two little nibbles. No bites yet. Let's see me do a single-handed snake roll with no spay. Hard to do on a 12-foot rod. There. What a nice night out on the Fox River. Nice evening. Labor Day 2021. I saw one other guy in here a few minutes ago, but he was leaving. I think he was discouraged. 
throwing the wrong stuff, but also, odd thing about the fox, we had like three cool days last week in the last five and all of a sudden everything's cooled off. And I mean like, okay, it dropped to 70 at night, that kind of thing, 68. The water's a little cool compared to the 80 that it's been for the last month. And I swear the bass turned off. Yesterday I spent six hours in the river, six hours. I got five nibbles, five hits, two fish in my hand, if you can imagine. And that's just a, that's just me hooked. Let me take a few pictures. Anyway, I'm doing just fine with my little micro tackle box. Perfectly fine, but I gotta catch some fish or I don't get to post this video. Okay, so we got one. And I don't know if I ever told you, but there's two rules in Minnesota when it comes to fly fishing. One, every time they jump out of the water, you gotta salute them. And if they get off, you have to bow. If you have your hat, if you're wearing a hat, you gotta take your hat off and give them a deep bow. Fish one, mark zero. But in this case, this little guy's coming up. Let's go pull him up. Give me a second. Oh, I hate doing this with a phone in my hand. There. We got a little, lovely little river smallmouth bass. Caught on that very hook that I was telling you about. Don't anybody look and say, oh, gee, put him back quick, he'll die. They're freaking bass, people. They sit out of the water for 10 minutes before they expire, sitting in dirt. You put them back in and they swim off and they bite you on the way down. So he can go anywhere. So there you are. We've got living proof that the minimalist, uh, I've already had like 20 bites. This is just the first one I pulled in. They're biting the tails and they're letting go. That's so fun. You can see the little wiggly tail they got right there. Sometimes they'll come up and they'll bite the tail and they'll hang on fiercely. Then it looks like they're coming to the surface. Poing! And it pops out. You got to doff your hat then too. Anyway, the minimalist uh, tackle box actually works. You got to see it because it ended with a little fish. And let's just manipulate this line a little bit more. Hold on. Yeah, good grief. There, there he is. That's the proper way to hold a bass. Isn't he gorgeous? River smallmouth, look at the green color on him. Absolutely sublime. Catching river smallmouth, absolutely sublime. Marvo with Voland Outdoors. You guys, if you've never been fishing on the Fox River, imagine catching 10 or 20 of these. 25 is my record last week. And there were a couple of 16 inches and 17 inches right inside those, right on the shoreline. They were coming right up on the shore, trying to bite little bugs and stuff and then flopping themselves back down like beached whales. It was amazing. I didn't see that today because of the water getting cool. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they're migrating downstream and we're just catching them, but at least they're here. So we'll see you out there. Bye. This guy's a fighter. I just threw the hook back in the line. This is like 10 seconds after I hung up on you guys and I, I got another one just by dangling it. He's actually a little bit bigger than the other one. He's pulling, look at what he's doing to my 12 foot rod. Let me get this up. He's angry, look at him. Let's go pull him in while I try, I was gonna, I wanted to share two other things with you. Um, rule number one and rule number two of fishing. Hold on, let me get this guy in. Uh, uh, uh. We're going to put the rod down between my legs. We're going to thumb this guy. He bit me. Look at that. Look at this little guy. Look at the colors in him. Why is this also there, there, there? Look at the colors on that. Look at the hate in his eye. That's hate. I'm telling you, that's hate. Look at the stripes. He's gonna turn into a bronze back. He's gonna turn into a tiger. And this guy's like 10 inches. So you're gonna catch these all day, every day. What I wanted to talk to you about was Mark's rules of fishing. Rule number one of fishing, rule number one. 
and there is no other rule. Uh, there is no other rule number one. Rule number one of fishing is you got to fish where the fish are. I'm going to let that sink in. If, if they're fishing, if they're in the, on the west bank and you decide you want to fish on the east bank, you're not going to catch any fish. The end. They're not going to come to you. The fish are where the fish are. So rule number one, you got to fish where the fish are. Rule number two, you got to fish what the fish want to eat. You got to fish what the fish want to eat. This is what they eat on the Fox River, guys. The little wiggly little fuckers. You see this thing? It's in his mouth. It's not on a shelf. It's not on display. It's not $2.79. It's not $3.99 because it looks like a real fish. It's what the fish is actually eating. It's a bass and he's eating this. So that's what you're going to go buy. Because if you don't, if you go and you throw a $3 lure at it, the bass isn't going to bite. At least, maybe not. Mostly he's not. He's not going to bite it. That breaks rule number two. You're not feeding the fish what he wants to eat. And if you're in the Fox River, guys, with green water, can you see the green in there? That was shin deep water and it's already green, okay? You got that? You got that? The fish need to see something first. And what they see, they see white. White wiggle tail, green wiggle tail, ten, or chartreuse, doesn't make that much difference, but it's gotta be white or they can't see it. You put in something black, they're gonna have a lot of trouble seeing it. Will you catch a fish occasionally? I suppose. But if you put white on, they'll catch it all the time. Why? Because that's rule number two. You gotta fish what the fish are eating. Rule number three, is you gotta fish at the depth the fish are at. If they're feeding on the surface, you gotta be on the surface. If they're feeding all the way down on the bottom and you get kinda close to the bottom, you're breaking rule number three. You're not gonna catch fish. Will they come up occasionally? Yes. Oh, I gotta go. Bit my thumb. Damn, you're clean off. Look, ah! Bye. Okay, it's 30 seconds later. And that little 11 inch, he was actually a legit 11, but he wasn't a 12. I got a size 12 foot. Size 12 foot is 12 inches long. The end. It's always funny how a lot of guys just can't figure that out. Anyway, I was talking about rule number three. You got to fish at the depth the fish are at. That's where you got to put your lure. So if you got something that hits the bottom and they're feeding a couple inches off the bottom, you got to get shorter. For me, I just shot. I came on here and probably cast, I must have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll bet I threw 40 casts, guys, before I before I realized that maybe I'm not fishing at the right depth. So what I did, I added one foot on to my leader. Actually, it improved my cast. It added probably 15 feet onto my cast because you got to you got to tune the length of the leader on a fly rod, especially on a spay rod. If you're if you're casting and it feels like the lure is just snapping out of the water like a whip, cracking like a whip, and it's kind of flopping through the water through the air. It goes like this before it lands. It's got so much energy and it doesn't have enough length. And the energy is not getting transmitted into creating a really nice loop. So I had two reasons for adding a foot, just a foot, onto what was an already perfectly sized leader. It was the length of the rod, 12 foot, plus a foot. But it needed to be two feet. When I added that extra foot on, 13, 14 inches, suddenly the hook, the, the line, the cast all smoothed out got really nice looking loops because it was anchoring and staying anchored a little bit better and the energy is transmitting into a longer loop. Yeah, there's a science there, guys. More importantly, as soon as the hook started hitting the bottom, bam, I started getting some fish and here I was wondering if they were all gone. Let's see if I can just cast right out here and pick one up. We're just, dang, we're, um, we're doing something called swinging. We're gonna throw it down at a 45 degree angle and we're gonna let it just swing across the bottom. It's gonna look like a little baby minnow swimming upstream, looking for food, hoping that he doesn't get eaten. La, 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 la. Then you're gonna see me do, when it's time, when it's on the dangle, it's all the way down there, it's time to cast it. It's hard to cast two-handed. What you're gonna see me do is a, a, a spiral lift followed by a cast and you'll end up with a really nice, that's a nice way to put the line back in the water quickly. So that little spiral lift is what gutted out of the water, made it easier to try to manage on a 12 foot rod single-handedly. And there's a couple different lifts. You saw me spiral uh, clock, uh, counterclockwise, but you could just as easily 
do a spiral lift the other direction. It really depends on which way the wind's blowing. And you're, you're always trying to turn the, the hook so it ends up going away from you and not whacking you in the head or the face. Anyway, we're gonna take a step down. This little current that you see in the middle of the river, it's all smooth water here, ripply right there, smooth water back out there. These ripples means it's slightly faster water and for some reason, they seem to like it better. Maybe there's more food in there, we don't care why. We're gonna throw a little cast out. What it's gonna do is sink to the bottom as I cast out sideways, it's gonna sink, but then as it starts going downstream, it's gonna start picking up speed because the pressure of the water on the rest of the fly line is gonna cause it all to accelerate. So it's gonna go faster and faster and faster. I'm gonna mend upstream a little bit to slow it down and to get the hook a little bit further down. Oh, 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 ah! oh, he was right there. Let's put it back in. He was following it. I'm gonna mend upstream. Gosh, this is hard to do with only one hand because usually I need my finger down here I need one one finger holding on the line. That's my little, that's my tension magnifier. It makes me more sensitive. There's another bass right down by my toe. There, something's actually nibbling on my toes right now. Right down in there somewhere. Oh, what a night. All right, I'm, uh, I'm on the dangle and I didn't get a bite. I want to cross that, that portion of the stream again. So I'm going to do a single spay. We're going to go down one step. Try it again. We're always looking for the next fish, the next fish, the next fish. You don't keep trying for the same one. Two, three casts. If he doesn't come back, then he's not the one you want. He's not the fighter. Oh, 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 oh. Let's try that one more time. That's gonna be a, that's a, a single-handed double spay cast. How do you like them apples on a 12-foot rod? Oh, got hooked up, darn it. Hope I didn't pick up a weed. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna move them a little bit more across stream. Nothing, single-handed double spay. Yeah, baby. Your Kung Fu is strong, Mark. Yes, it is. Feeling little tugs, but that means they're biting at the tail. It means even if I try to set the hook, all I'm gonna do is stretch the tail, leave it off in his mouth. I'm tired of bowing to a bunch of little 10 inch fish. Let's try one more. Let's out, let a little line out. There, I threw one more foot of line out just to make the spay casting go a little easier. We're going to snap. There's a single handed snap cast. Really good way to do to do swing to swing to swing hooks. You can do it with or without a, a single haul. Single haul is just going to get more distance, a little nicer, a little loop. Anyway, I was talking about rule number three, wasn't I? Rule number three means fish at the right depth for those fish. And those are the three rules. Those are the only thing that you have to worry about and you will catch fish if you adhere to them. If you don't follow those rules, your chances of getting a fish go way, way down really, really fast. Let's go back into the water because if you see the sun, put your hand up with the bottom at the horizon and the top of your thumb right underneath the sun, that's one hour. So I have barely one hour and 15 minutes of daylight left. Got a fish, be right back. Not very big, this is about five, oh, 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 we got a salute there. That's what a salute looks like from, from the camera's angle. Look at him, he's flying all over the place. He's pissed. Oh, now he's in my line. Come on, get out of there. Get up. All right, go get this little guy, hold on. Look at how gorgeous the colors are on that guy. Gorgeous. Here, I gotta, I can't lip him, I'm gonna finger him. There. Imagine what he's gonna be like seven years from now. This is what it takes, this is about year one. 
and you see the little orange in his eyes? He's got a little rock bass DNA going on there. Look at that. That's what's so cool about the Fox River. All right, that's number three. Uh, maybe I can get five before I go home. Let's do... Let's do uh, Arkansas release. Oh, I ain't on there. Almost. Nah, I gotta set him down. Gotta do a Minnesota release. That was so funny. That was that was the second out of the last two bass. That was the second one that as soon as I released him, he shot right down from my feet, and he was belt. He was like he was like he was like ramming me. Bam! It was like you mother. Fucker, you sitting here pounding on my feet six or seven times before he finally took off. I mean, that's what bass are like, river smallmouth. They're, they're apex, they're apex predators in this river. They get pissed when you take them. They come back, when I say there's hate in their eyes, I mean really, there's hate in their eyes. You pull a 16, 17 incher out and you go home, your thumb is shredded like you just took a like you just ran it over some broken glass that you ground in a mortar and pestle. You guys that catch bass here know exactly what I'm talking about. You go home and you touch your wife's cheek, oh hi honey, and she's like, don't touch me with that damn sandpaper thumb. Like that. Now we're gonna cast on the other side. What I'm doing is casting towards shore to start, and then my next cast I cast out to the middle of the river. The next cast I go down here, let it dangle. Next one out here, let it dangle. That's what's so cool about using a spay rod to fish the Fox River. And if you're wondering why I'm only going two rod lengths out from my rod right now, it's because rule number one, that's where the fish are. Who cares if I can pound out with this 10 foot, with this 12 foot rod, I can pound out 105 foot casts all day long. 90 is my typical number, all day, every day. What's the point if they're only 30 feet from my rod tip? I just shot 60 yards, 60 feet over, and now I gotta like strip that 60 feet back in? What are we, what are you thinking? That doesn't make any sense. Fish where the fish are. And if this is where they're biting, all in these swirls right here, well, this is where I'm gonna put my hook. Then I leave the rest of this line that's dangling. That's for when I punch one out there, 90 feet out to the shoreline. There's another fish right down by my feet. I'll bet if I dangle my hook, like sometimes when you drop it right down by your feet, you never see a trout do this, guys. But you, you bass fishermen, you throw your hook down to get ready to cast it, and then when you go to cast, it feels like something, uh, up, 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 up. Something's biting on the dangle right now. Let's just leave it here and see if he tries. I'm gonna shift sideways. He's there. And I got something biting on my little toe. Ah! I'm being attacked. It's a melee on the fox. Come on, you little baby. I dare you to try that again. Okay. Oops. Gotta do a big circle now. Get that rod, get that line out. Okay. One more cast over here and then we punch it back to shore. I'm feeling a little bit of hookup. It's a little shallower out in the middle of the river than where I'm standing. Because you see, that's 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 just sand. That's a rock. Good, unhooked. There's a tip. I'm just loaded with tips today. Use hooks that are stronger than the fish, but weaker than the tippet line, the tippet portion of your of your leader. So that in the end, when you get hooked up on a rock, instead of having to walk over to unhook it, you just pull, and the hook slowly straightens itself out, pops off the rock, you reel it back in, bend the hook back into a curve, keep casting, and you've saved your line. Or you can not listen to me, and you'll just lose hook after hook after hook, because you keep breaking your tippet. Mark is good, Mark is wise. All right, we're waiting. It's over in the clear water here, and then starting right in the riffles here. This is where the bass are feeding right now. That's where I'm expecting something to happen. That other fisherman came back. He's right down there, even with the telephone pole. I think he was on a park bench and he watched me and saw that I was starting to catch. But he's too ashamed to come back right from fish next to me. 
which is where the fish are. And if the fish are not down there, guys, guess what's gonna happen? Rule number one. I broke rule number two. I was doing pretty good at rule number one when I first started trying to find how, how to fish bass. I was doing pretty good. I was going where the fish, I thought the fish were, and I wasn't catching anything. I was throwing fly after fly after fly. I was buying them, I was tying them, I was buying, I was tying, I was buying, I was tying, I was tying nothing. Then one day I stood next to a guy right down in my home water in North Aurora, Illinois, at North Aurora Island Park. And I was convinced there were no bass in my waters. I had all kinds of excuses that it had something to do with us being down below the catch and release, so all the harvesters were getting all the bass. And this guy, this guy took his regular open face reel and took out a hook that was about three inches long and was white and was wiggly. He started casting right where I was casting. He started pulling a fish out every third cast and he did that for an hour straight until he finally had about 10 or 15 fish. Ten or fifteen fish, and then I finally looked and said, "What are you? What are you? What are you catching them on?" And he said, the, the, "The Fox River fish, the bass in the Fox River, only care about three things." He said, "Is it white? Does it wiggle? And does it hit the bottom? If you do those three things, the bass doesn't give a flying fart in outer space. What? How real it is? Doesn't care." The bass are gonna crush that hook. And I watched it with my own eyes. I went home that day. I went to a Walmart, rather. I went and bought the tiniest little jig hook I can. One thirty-second of an ounce, white head, red eye with a black dot in the middle and a white wiggly body. I put it on and it went right back to that same spot. And within 10 casts, I was catching fish. Why do I say 10 and not like make up something and say, you know, no first cast? Because I didn't get the depth right. I had a really short leader that day and I needed to get it out longer. I needed to get it deeper. You could use sink tips, a uh, waste of time. Just, just, just learn how to throw a jig head, guys. You'll be a lot happier on a really massive line. So I started catching fish rule because I started listening to rule number two as, oh, just a rock, as taught to me by someone else. You want to catch fish? Swallow your pride. Become a student. Ask, ask anybody, anytime, anywhere that's catching more fish than you what he's doing. And then be prepared to teach whenever it's your chance to teach. All right, let me, let me, let me hang up a little bit. I, like, I want to punch a few out there and I need two hands. Number five. Little guy again, maybe nine inches. That's why I use such lightweight, like a four or five rod, 12 foot, but you see how much it bends even with a little nine inch guy on there? Let's bring him in. I'm not saluting him because I'm lifting him out of the water. <laughs> He's not jumping. Hold on. You get him thumbed. Look at this guy, very different. There, very different markings. He's got a little bit more tiger stripe and it's in the middle of his body. He doesn't, he's got a black eye. There, he's got a black eye. So he's a proper river smallmouth. And if you're wondering if it's a smallmouth, look where the angle, look, look where the V in the jaw goes of his jaw hinge. If it goes way back behind his eyeball when it's closed, it's a large mouth. But you could see when this one closes, it's gonna be ahead of his eye. He's a river smallmouth. Plus he's got the bronze and tiger stripes going on. Everything that says river small mall, baby. All right, let me go and unhook him. That's number four. I got one more to go before I can leave. This one snuck up. He's jumped twice, but this is my number five. Keep your rod tip low, pull horizontally in the water. Don't try to lift him until he's tired. If you lift up, that's his signal to start really being violent. You want to slowly sneak him in. That means keep the rod tip horizontal, pull sideways. They'll come if you pull sideways. Look at this. Just keep going back and forth. And he got off. That's a Minnesota release. That's my number five. Oh, that 
Let's see how much time we got left. About 10, 20, 30, 30 minutes left of sunlight. There he is. There's number six. If I land him, he'll be number five. Look at that, all angry. This is really hard to do with a camera in your hands. Hold on. There. There. Get that, that line off of him. Look at that. I swear it's that same one from before. But you'll see I'm in a different part of the river. I walk 50 yards back to the east. It's a different fish, guys. Trust me. See a little white on his gill? The other guy didn't have that. Go back and look at the film. Right there. Number six. Hope you guys enjoyed tonight's little segment. Rule, the three fishing rule, the three rules of fishing, and how to make, how to make a minimal uh, fly fishing rig where you're just fishing with one hook and anything that's in your pocket and it's more than enough to catch fish. We'll see you out there.